Thank you so much for having me. Um, it's an honor to be with uh, such skilled practitioners of GIS, uh, something which I aspire to be someday, but I am but a middling musician attempting to be a te technician here. All right, so um, what I just want to show you tonight is kind of a brief overview of the Anacostia River in the District of Columbia. And for those who may or may not be familiar with it, uh, for a long time, this river has been uh, synonymous with industrial waste and also um, sewage pollution. Um, and so we're gonna take a quick look uh, using mostly uh, rudimentary put together slides of historic maps. <laughs> I'm sorry, that my maps aren't more interactive um, of how this came to be and what the district is currently doing uh, to remediate this problem. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll learn a lot along the way. Uh, so this is kind of a snapshot of what the river used to look like after a bad rainstorm. This photo was taken at the northern end of the tidal stretch of the river. Um, the river extends up to the fall line, you know, where the tide stops. Um, but so uh, we have a continuing issue of um, stormwater runoff uh, bringing huge amounts of plastic pollution to the river. However, it's gotten much better due to recent infrastructure upgrades, and we'll dive into those, no pun intended. So to give you some brief context, uh, the District of Columbia you know, was chosen by um, our founding fathers, or you know, George Washington was involved in picking the site because it'd be, it sat at the nexus of the, uh, of the tidal plain, uh, so connecting the you know, industries of the East Coast um, with access to um, the Midwest. You know, if you follow the Potomac and what would be the CNO Canal, that would uh, open up trade. Uh, and so this was seen as a great place to connect both the South and the North, as well as uh, a burgeoning frontier. So this is what the district uh, was envisioned to look like in early 1800 late 1700s. And it was always imagined to be a relatively compact city. So I just wanna point out where the map ends up here. This is what we know today as Florida Avenue. And so when they built the city, they thought uh, that'll probably be the size of it. We've got these rivers that come in up here and up here, they flow through the city and some of them emptied out into what was going to be a canal uh, running through the city down the National Mall right here in front of the Capitol right here, then running south before splitting um, to go down to the Navy Yard and then what is uh, Buzzard's Point over here. And as we'll see later, there are some significant land masses that exist today that did not exist at that time. So this is what the district looked like around uh, the time of its founding, uh, very idyllic. You'll notice a, what looks like a slow moving river uh, the Anacostia River used to run 40 feet deep naturally um, when, uh, I guess, Europeans first started exploiting it uh, for commerce. And so you'll see a relatively undeveloped and a lot of open farmland and whatnot. You've got, uh, you know, the Capitol being built right here, White House. Um, you know, not everything is to proportion here, but I guess the artists want everyone to see what's going on. And also the Washington Navy Yard the oldest naval installation in America, founded in 1799. So this perspective is looking west uh, from the hills of uh, Anacostia, the neighborhood of Anacostia. So fast forward a little bit more, and um, with the development of the CNO Canal came uh, what I think is a fascinating artifact, but you know, you wouldn't know exist, existed uh, today, is a canal that did run down uh, the center of the city, what is now the National Mall. And it curved right in front of the Capitol building and then continued south. So they did execute that original vision of Pierre L'Enfant to have this canal running through the city. Now, um, as time went on, I should probably look at my notes. I give this presentation about once every year. Um, however, um, about 20 years after this canal was built, it wasn't competitive with the rise of railroads and it fell into disuse. It um, became just kind of a place people put their household effluent, dead horses, you name it, that was a place it could go. And eventually it just became kind of a, a polluted backwaters that didn't have very good um, water flow. 
So now let's go back uh, to remember what the plan was. And then we saw the canal and what it looked like. And now they're dealing with the issue of what to do with the canals. How can they be put to another use now that they're really not used for commerce? And so what I'm about to overlay here, and here's my attempt to be a maps guy, is uh, now it's gonna be a map from 1894. And this map, uh, the bold red lines are gonna highlight um, the development of a main sewer system in DC. So the thick red lines are kind of the trunk lines that were the backbone of this system. Um, anyway, so with that being said, you'll notice that again, the city kind of ended at Florida Avenue right here. So we'll go this next map. Whereas Florida Avenue became kind of a main trunk line to capture all the sewage and effluent that was coming from above there. And then uh, this became a main trunk line. And so recall now, if you look on the mall, the canal is gone. Uh, it's been filled in. And in its place, they've covered it over. They bricked over the canal and they turned it into a sewage um, tunnel. And so this uh, formed the basis of the Anacostia's century plus long reputation as a completely polluted riverway. Um, because at the end of the day, the city as it existed at that time, the only natural choice was to have all the effluent and waste collected here, just go into these newly created sewer tunnels and empty out into the river. So you'll see down here, all these dark spots along the edge of the river is where they just created tunnels that um, were effectively combined sewer systems, uh, combining both rainwater runoff and sewage runoff, all went into one pipe and into the river. And therefore, it was someone else's problem once it got to the river. Um, feel free to stop me uh, if I've gone over my allotted time. Uh, I'll just briefly touch on what that means again. Uh, on the right-hand side here, you got a combined sewer system. This is the old state of the art. 1800s, this was the modern thing that everybody loved and wanted. You took rainwater, you took sewage water, you put it into one pipe, bada bing, bada boom, someone else's problem now. Whereas on the left-hand side, you see what is the more preferred modern construction of stormwater management and wastewater management. You have two systems, separated systems, uh, one carrying sewage to a waste treatment plant and one carrying rainwater um, to your corner drains, and then through pipes to local waterways. Um, and just so an exciting new development that's happened in the last few years is the district's water utility, DC Water, has uh, embarked on what is called the Clean Rivers Project. This was created by a lawsuit filed um, by the EPA against the District of Columbia for its violation of the Clean Waters Act. And what it required is a control plan to reduce the combined sewer overflows to district bodies of water. And so what they've done is create a brand new mega tunnel system underneath the Anacostia River for now. Uh, and then um, they are building a secondary uh, section underneath the Potomac River starting in a couple of years. And so this is what it looks like. You'll see that, you know, effluent from homes and also storm drains gather in what is used to be the traditional main pipes. And whereas before they used to go out into the river during large storm events, now they get redirected down a, down a drop shaft into a new massive tunnel that was made by a tunnel boring machine, 23 feet wide. And that serves as a cistern of sorts to just collect all the rainwater and all the sewage that happens during large storm events. And ideally just a place to store it until the event is over and then it is all pumped out for treatment. I'll give you a quick gif of what uh, this tunnel alignment currently looks like. This blue section is what has been completed to date. And then at RFK Stadium, you'll see, uh, and actually it's continued up another about eight miles into the city. And again, they're gonna be building a new section um, of that. And um, I guess I'll, I got two more slides. Uh, so. This triangle is the District of Columbia. It used to be 10 square miles and it's about six and change square miles now today. So the gray area is the entire area that used to be serviced by the old sewer system, the combined sewer system. And so you can imagine all the household waste, all the showers and all the street runoff from that gray area used to have to go into a combined sewer system, which would easily get overwhelmed during storm events and blow out into the Anacostia River, because that's where the most of the 
combined sewer outfalls were located. Um, so you'll see here they've built in phases, uh, in four phases, this new tunnel system. The yellow phase was first, that goes down to the Blue Plains Waste Treatment Plant down here. Pink phase was finished in 2018. Uh, this blue phase was just finished a couple months ago, but has not been brought online. And then I believe in the next year or two, um, this final phase under the Potomac River um, is going to be starting construction. So at the end of the day, uh, the district will be achieving almost a 98% capture rate of not only the waste, um, like human waste, sewage that used to go into the rivers, but also uh, millions of pounds of floating plastic and street runoff. Uh, and I'll leave you with a final thing. Uh, prior to taking on my new position, I used to work for the Anacostia River Sediment Project and also uh, communications for my agency. So I would encourage you to visit either anacostiasedimentproject.com or I believe I have it on my first slide here, what is now the catch-all website, restoretheanacostiariver.com, where you can learn more about all these other exciting efforts. There's a lot of other great stuff going on that I haven't touched on here, but I'm going to leave it there. That is my lightning presentation. Thank you for your time. Great. Thanks so much, Brent.